resources, inspiring interviews, business practices, and practical advice to take your art career to the next level. Join Sergio Gomez in today's Artist Next Level and get ready to take control of your career. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the Art Next Level podcast. I'm super happy to be here with you here on a Chicago morning day, which is super freezing cold temperature. I think we just broke the <laughs> record today, but I'm not alone. I'm here with Jamie Foster, which is also a Chicago-based Woo-hoo. artist. Hey, Jamie. Good morning. How are you? Hey, good. Good. How well, are you? I'm doing good. And we keeping are not warm. in the same room. Yeah, keeping warm. We are a few miles away <laughs> from each other. But uh, we are connected here through the internet, and that is pretty awesome, even though it's freezing it's space and time. <laughs> yeah, it's been like a, a couple of days. For those of you, my friends who are not in Chicago, these last couple of days, you know, it's been insane. Now, maybe a few days after I post this episode to go live, however, you know, just know that we recorded this when, like, under, way below freezing temperatures, I think like minus <laughs> or something like that. So it's, uh, we are bunkered, yeah, we- bunkered down. <laughs> We we beat out Antarctica with our temperatures. I know. I was crazy. looking at that. That is insane. I know. Oh, and, my uh, God. So it crazy. was crazy. And before that, we started recording. <laughs> we were talking about, you know, how we were keeping our dogs warm. <laughs> right? <laughs> while going outside. So, uh, yeah. My friends, yeah, today we're going to talk about here, Jamie and I, we're going to talk about this idea of the ever-changing life of an artist, and which I think is fascinating for me. You know, every artist's life is unique. And we all have our story. We all have our kind of our way of doing things. And uh, I wanted to invite Jamie here to join me today to have this conversation about, you know, how life of an artist evolves. How do we make it work as we go through life? It's, we wish it would be, you know, really easy, like, you know, any other maybe profession that you go to work and you come back home and it's all, you know, that's it, right? But being an artist, it's, it's like 24-7 thing. And, uh, it, yeah, it's. It, it's the it's life complex. of being a hustler. <laughs> yeah, that's right. We hustle back and forth, left and right. Constantly and, hustling. Yeah. And I think in this uh, episode, you know, we're going to talk a little bit about that. You know, what does the hustle mean for you? How does it mean for me? And uh, hopefully uh, this will help some of our friends here who are listening today also and that uh, relate to those conversations as well. So, Jamie, before we get started into kind of like this hustling conversation, tell us a little bit about yourself, mm-hmm. kind of where you grew up, how you ended up here in okay. Chicago. Well, I'm actually from the south suburb of Chicago. Oh, really? So, I thought, oh, okay, I, so you're originally from here. Yeah, yeah, I'm mm. originally from here. Okay. Um, and we just... My husband and I had to get out of the Midwest for a while, so we sold our house and spontaneously moved up to Seattle for a few years. <laughs> so it's, it's too cold here when we to Seattle. <laughs> yeah, yeah, pretty much, pretty much. And, uh, you know, Chicago's like the, the mafia. Like, you, you can't ever get out. Like, they keep <laughs> sucking you back in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's so right. So here we are. Um, wow. No, we so spent, how long, yes, how long have you been back here in Chicago? Um, so we've been back uh, longer than we were out in Seattle. We've been back now for six years. Yeah. Wow. And we were, so we were out in Seattle and Portland for five years. Mm-hmm. And that was when the economy totally crashed. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so it was, it, was, uh, it was a lot of work, you know, yeah. just yeah. to keep afloat. I can imagine. And uh, we've met, uh, I don't remember how we met, but we met a while back when you came back Water here to Street Chicago. Studios. Yeah. You, oh, yeah, yeah. The Joker Center. Yeah. You came to our studios and then uh, I met you and also Michael, your husband, who is also an artist and designer. Yes. And um, you guys sometimes do collaborations together, which maybe we'll talk a little bit about that in a minute. But uh, sometimes. Yeah. I, think, <laughs> yeah, I think that started kind of a nice friendship. And then, uh, Many of your friends are my friends and vice versa. So it's kind of a... Yeah. I mean, it's been fun over yeah, the years. I, mm-hmm. um, I had a studio at Water Street in Batavia. Oh, yeah. And mm-hmm. yeah, I was a part of the show. And you came to the show. You were... I think you, you were critiquing the show. Um, and possibly maybe you curated it. So you were at the show. And, and I think that's how we originally met. Oh, okay, okay. You got, yeah. you got better memory than I do. My memory is <laughs> crossing with this weather. Oh, yeah. 
<laughs> that, that is cool. And over the years, you know, as we have known each other and, you know, sometimes we, we uh, have uh, exhibited together. Um, we have also mm -hmm. run into each other sometimes and through openings and things like that. You know, the community yep. of Chicago of artists. And, um, you know, as, as I was thinking about this, like, gee, you know, life, life evolves and life changes. You know, when we met, probably had more black hair than... I don't have any black hair right now. All my head is white. <laughs> <laughs> but besides the physical, it's also, you know, what we do as artists and the activities that we go through in order to, to keep our sanity as artists, to keep our production yeah. as well, and to keep our spirit, you know, kind of uh, excited about the art that we create. Mm -hmm. sometimes, sometimes it's hard. Sometimes it's easier. Sometimes we go through periods in which, you know, we, we're doing a lot of, creative things and sometimes we maybe go to droughts too in which maybe it's not as creative Absolutely. and yeah. those are those are important cycles so um before we can kind of talk a little bit more about that let's uh, tell our friends uh, how you describe your art um well i've been called an, an artist or an abstract expressionist um and my work is my work in mixed media so it's kind of, I'm kind of all over the place in the sense of constantly exploring and experimenting. Mm -hmm. um, I turn paintings into like almost like three-dimensional sculptures. Mm -hmm. um, and I predominantly work in paper, wood, acrylic, and ink. Mm -hmm. um, so I create, you know, sometimes I'll just do regular paintings on canvas. Other times I'll create these like three-dimensional paintings um, with mixed media. And I have a photography background, so sometimes I'll even print out one of my images and paint on one of my photographs. Oh, that's cool. So I kind of, you know, I really like dipping in and just exploring all different aspects. Hmm. That's awesome. And, uh, you know, your work is quite intricate. Um, in scale, you, know, you do from small pieces to large ones. Actually, here in our house, we have yeah. one pieces, which we love. Yeah. It's in our, uh, right next to where we have our dining area, so it's nice. We see it every day. Uh, and, uh, yeah, thank you. And uh, it's, uh, you know, it's, like, it's, it's time consuming, it's intricate, it's uh, a lot of detail that you create. And what about your yeah, artists? I think that was. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was one of my mixed media pieces that you guys have, which yeah. is um, paper and kind mm -hmm. of uh, collage and, and right. acrylic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so sometimes like I'm in the kitchen and I'm you know, preparing something and I'm looking at it like, oh, I noticed something that I hadn't seen before, which is kind of the, the wonderful thing. About <laughs> I love art that always Absolutely. continues to give. And that's kind of the type of art that I collect, uh, you know, the art that you continuously giving right I feel like oh you're yeah giving more and more <laughs> yeah well people definitely see all sorts of things in my art that's for sure yeah and uh you know not intended it's just, it's the subconscious i think speaking out but yeah it's uh it's always really cool when people point out things that you even yourself didn't see in your own work right. you know yeah totally i agree I agree. I totally agree about that. And sometimes I even use that like on Instagram. I make a post and then yeah. I, uh, I ask, hey, so, you know, what do you see? Just to see what people yeah. see. And it's funny. Like the other day I posted a, an image where, uh, you know, it's a guy with the, the hands are crossing the chest, but it's like with like, it's like a ghostly figure. So it's like, it's dripping. Oh, yeah. I've seen that one. It's yeah. Great. So a lot of people say, oh, you know, I, I, I see a ghost or I see a jellyfish. I never thought about it as a jellyfish. <laughs> it's just, <laughs> just kind of right. fun to see what people perceive. Absolutely. Yeah. Now, Jamie, also, uh, so you're married to another creative individual, which um, <laughs> for me is very different because I'm married to a psychologist. And actually, I was talking in another podcast yesterday with a friend about you know, this idea of, of living with someone who's not an artist. So now I'm going to ask you, you know, what is it like to live with another creative individual as an, another artist? You know, what, what are the dynamics of that? Well, it's, it's both wonderful and um, frustrating <laughs> <laughs> at the same time. Mm -hmm. No, it's, you know, it's, it's great because we're constantly 
we're we're learning from each other and we're growing from you know just from one another basically and you know michael's there to help me critique my work and bounce off ideas on and vice versa mm. so it's it's definitely more helpful than anything and we kind of like there's a little bit of competition i think yeah that's good um probably unintentional but there's a little bit of competition there and which is good right like mm -hmm. i think you know we we can we all need to be motivated to move forward mm -hmm. and do our best in anything that we do so having that a little bit of fire underneath us you know not necessarily a bad thing Right. Do, do you sometimes get like into like, hey, you know, like, where did you take my favorite pencil or where's my my Genta color or something like that? Or, or you guys oh, have like, yeah. tools or you have or you share like, your, <laughs> <laughs> your toolbox? So we have two different like carts with all of our supplies. Okay. And we had to just separate them, you know, so <laughs> those are Michael's, these are mine because I would go to find something and it was missing and then I'd be like, Hey, <laughs> where's, you know, where's this? Where's that? So yeah, we kind of had to keep it separate. And plus I'm constantly on the go okay. and I will, I pack my art supplies, you know, mm. to bring with me everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so yeah. That, and that's, that prevents Michael from stealing your supplies. I'm sure. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just keep them in my car. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Is it, you can't go get them now. Temperatures. <laughs> right. <laughs> that is awesome. So, uh, Jamie, um, tell us a little bit about your also your studio uh, space because you work you work yeah. from home, right? And you have had like, yeah. We're talking about, we're talking about life changes, right? You have had times in your life in which you have studio space, and then you have times in which you have yeah. you're working your in your own home. So tell us a little bit about, uh, you know, the difference between the two and where are you at with that right now? Well, we are blessed to live on the property of one of our art collectors. And um, she is amazing because she's, uh, well, she has an amazing space too. And she's just an amazing person because she's so supportive. But we have a heated and air conditioned garage. Mm -hmm. And I mean, this garage has like a kitchen and it. it's ridiculous. Beautiful, yeah. So, yeah, it's, you know, we have that, all that space to use um, in the warmer months where we could just kind of spread out and utilize that space. And we, we're on like five acres in the back of this wooded lot. So it's really inspiring and it's beautiful. And um, it's really a joy to work from. And so we've been here almost six years mm. and um, she doesn't want us to leave, <laughs> which is, which says a lot, you know, we're, right. we're all like family at this point. That's, but that's awesome. yeah, it's a, it's an awesome space to create from in the winter. It gets kind of tough because we just have, we live in a small loft mm. and I'm primarily working for my art desk. Mm. Okay. So yeah. But, um, right. you know, I'm, I'm always on the go too. So mm -hmm. I'm creating on the go a lot and I'm kind of used to that flexibility. Right. So let's talk a little bit about that too. The, you know, the, uh, the movement, right. Uh, the, yeah. we all, we all have different things that we do and, you know, different activities and as, and as artists, you know, the, there's also the, uh, you know, it's not just the art that we make, but also sometimes the activities that we have to do. Um, mm -hmm. whether, you know, if you're teaching or if you are working or if you're designing or if you are doing commissions, it's always, you know, some other thing that also comes and goes in our art careers. Uh, what is it that you do also for you to kind of help you in your career to, um, to as a complementary to your income as an artist and so on? Um, well, I, I'll tell you about uh, the other part of my passion, mm -hmm. which is uh, animals and nature. Mm -hmm. So I'm kind of an animal rights activist. And I, um, I'm actually an ambassador for an art organization called the Freedom, the Rescue Freedom Project. Oh, wow. um, cool. And they're an organization out of LA, but they rescue all sorts of different animals 
um, through animal testing, uh, the Korean meat trade, um, all sorts of, you know, puppy mills, all sorts of bad situations. And so that's a big passion of mine. Mm -hmm. And through being inspired by that and animal rescue, I started another project on the side and I'm, I'm basically working with different shelters and animal organizations. So that's been really fulfilling Mm -hmm. and it feels good to be doing something so positive. Um, And it's been bringing this whole different aspect into my art, Mm -hmm. you know, more nature, more animals and that I'm incorporating into my work. And it's just, it's been really keeping me motivated and like feeling good, especially during all these, you know, these political struggles that Mm -hmm. we're having in our country. And Mm -hmm. yeah, it has a really positive aspect to it. So that's, that's awesome. That's awesome. And, uh, you know, it is cool that then you can, you can merge kind of like this other passion, right? So, you know, like for me, Absolutely. for me, the other passion, you know, besides making art in my studio, I love what I'm doing right now here with you, right? I love this, doing the podcast, <laughs> doing the breakfast with Sarah. Yeah. You know, I, I don't do it because it's, it's just another job that I want have to do, but it's because I love to do it. Right. Yeah. 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 You're being part well, of Well, and you're good at it. <laughs> you're good at it yeah you yeah. are and you know I, I don't see myself without those other things that i enjoy doing right so uh it's right. so cool that you're able to do it so uh, what does it mean to be an ambassador for for them um like what, what kind of thing? um well it's basically kind of um almost you know i'm basically kind of working as an arm of the organization where i'm um, educating people on what they do and mm-hmm. their organization, how, how they rescue animals. And um, they just started a sanctuary out in LA actually. And, oh. and so it's, it's kind of, you know, hoping to draw more attention to their, um, what they're doing and bring in people who are interested in, in donating or adopting mm. through them. So, so that's awesome. So as an artist, how have you kind of uh, uh, kind of brought that into your art, and or how have you kind of combined both the art and the uh, you know this organization? Well, it's um, I I was kind of that was spinning in my mind and mm-hmm. a lot, and it, it but it it kind of naturally organically happened where mm-hmm. I would just start sketching an animal, you know, and Mm -hmm. then it turned into a painting and then it turned into three commissions, (laughs) you know, and, and I'm like, okay, you know, this is kind of meant to be like, what can I do with this? Mm -hmm. And that's when I started the pet project and, and Mm -hmm. really just focused on giving back, you know, what more can I do and Mm -hmm. how can I help? Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, it's just it's taken off, and it's um, it's been keeping me very busy. But mm-hmm. I've met so many wonderful people through it. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, art lovers, animal lovers, just really good people who they're all about volunteering and and mm-hmm. giving and you know doing good. Mm-hmm. So oh, that's awesome. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. Yeah, so it's really uplifting. Yeah, uh, and I, I love those uh, opportunities in which uh, we as artists can we we can find a kind of a way to collaborate either with another artist or collaborate with a brand or collaborate with an organization and and kind of get creative on how to do it right just as you mentioned it right so I think at the end of the day I mean uh, tell me how that works for you but I think it benefits both right uh, if it's done correctly the organization gets to work with the artist and uh, more awareness is brought into that. There's the visual element that the artist can provide and bring. And then vice versa, the, the artist, you know, can also get more visibility. Hopefully, you know, also there's a way in which maybe more people may want a commission or, or some sort. So that there's a yeah. has to be win-win on both sides, right? Yeah, for sure. For sure. And, you know, I, I thought of how it's, 
it's literally tapping into a whole different audience, you know, animal rescue, um, volunteer, you know, people who are just like out there in the community and they might know nothing about art, but Mm -hmm. if you turn, you know, if I'm turning my abstract art and meshing that, melding it into like a painting of a, you know, portraiture of their dog, let's say, Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. then they're, you know, they're instantly being exposed to, to art in a way that mm-hmm. they never have been. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. I've had people who, you know, bought my paintings through this and, and mm-hmm. are commissioning me mm-hmm. that never would have heard of me otherwise, exactly. you know? So it's, it's just such a great blend. Yeah. Yeah, no, that is awesome. And I love it because a lot of times, you know, we as artists, we get asked to like donate, right? So say, oh, can, you, can you donate yeah. for this? Can you donate for that? And, you know, I always... Which is hard. <laughs> yeah, and, and I always advise artists, you know, just donate to the a, a cause that you really believe about, right? And for exactly. example, I, every year I, I make a couple pieces for donation and I donate to the causes I, I really believe about. And, uh, but we are continually asked, you know, to do this. And sometimes, you know, most of the time, you know, you donate it and it's a good thing and it's great, but, but it ends right there. Right? But that's it. Right. Exactly. But when you can do kind of something like what you're doing, which is then partnering, it's a much different story. It's like let's partner together so that we can work together in the long run versus here's a piece and then, you know, put it in an auction and. Absolutely. That's it. Right. I yeah. Because as artists, I mean, we can't continuously be just donating our work. Exactly. I mean, we, we would we would never make any money exactly. <laughs> and pay our bills, right. but um, yeah, to to work with people who are definitely aware of your situation and you know uh, mm-hmm. they're not there to take advantage in any way and they're there to even help promote you. Right. Um, right. For example, I worked with the Hinsdale Humane Society um, not too long ago, and they were opening a brand new facility, which is just beautiful this massive facility with like a a playroom and and their kennels were all pristine and glass and and uh and Michael and I were at their their opening painting live and then donated our painting um live on stage you know so there were thousands of people there a couple thousand of people and you know that was not only great exposure, but it was just such a beautiful thing to be a part of. Exactly. No, that's fabulous. I think that is, that is pretty, pretty awesome. That's pretty awesome. Fantastic. Yeah. So, uh, um, I always love to also provide, you know, a little bit of advice in our podcast, right? So for example, maybe somebody who's listening to this podcast and maybe that has, they have also a passion of their own, maybe an organization that they may be interested in working on, you know, what may be something that, that kind of will help you to, to start working with this organization that maybe uh, uh, that you could tell somebody who says, Hey, Hey, me, uh, Jamie, uh, I would love to do something like that with an organization that I know or in my town or so on, you know, uh, just a piece of advice that you would give. Yeah, I would definitely recommend that, um, you know, they, they um, look into volunteering and if they don't have time to necessarily volunteer, but want to just do what I'm doing and kind of donate work and, um, then just contact them directly and, you know, introduce yourself, um, tell them that you're very passionate about what their organization does and that you just, you know, you would love to help out in any way, especially if it's utilizing your talents. And a lot of times, you know, they will just kind of work with you like, well, great. Like, how can we do this? And you can come up with a plan. That is fabulous. I think that's a great idea. That's a great idea. Uh, Jamie, thank you so much for sharing your, ex, you know, your expertise on that and your own experience doing that. Oh, now, as, yeah, my pleasure. As, yeah, no, and uh, as we start wrapping it up for the for today, uh, Jamie, can you give us uh, information on where can our friends find you on social media? What's your website? Sure. Um, well, my website is jamiefoster.com and that's J-A-I-M-E, Foster, just like the crappy beer, (laughs) F-O-S-T-E-R dot com. And I'm on Instagram um, under Jamie Foster Artist. 
Um, the pet project is on Instagram as well. I'm on Facebook, uh, probably as much as Sergio. And <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so you can definitely find me all over. That's awesome, Jamie. That's awesome. Now, I'm going to give you also a chance to ask me whatever you want to ask me. So now we'll reverse the, the microphones here. What would you like oh, to ask? Oh, man. Okay, so I'm interested to hear what organizations you collaborate with. Ah, that's a great question. <laughs> that's a great question. So <laughs> every year, every year I donate to an organization that's called LLI. Uh, what does it stand for? Um, Lead and Leadership uh, Institute, something like that. But it's, it's oh, okay. I know, I know this LLI, and what they do is they have um, an office in Central America, and they provide education for under you know uh, kids who can't afford it, and also yeah who want to learn like certain uh, uh, you know things that can help them in life like sewing or you know professions like that and so okay. they've been that for a few years so every year I donate work to them and I actually you know make that's work great throughout the year and I was thinking about them I and once in a while you know an organization may hit me up you know for something and you know if I have still a work that that I haven't donated yet if it makes sense I will do it but that's one that I've been uh, supporting for the last few years and I've been very happy with and uh, that's it's, great it's just, yeah it's a great organization and it's chicago based as well and okay it's important to know the the founders you know the people who started you know their passion and making sure that you know the uh the donation is going to good hands yeah that's fabulous yeah. that's really great so when is uh when's the next big show for you ah uh, that's a good question too uh so right now i'm planning Let's see, 20, so 2018 was really busy for me, right? So I did a lot of shows, yeah. had, had to do a lot of traveling. So actually, I'm really excited because 2019 is not that busy in terms of exhibitions. So I'm actually looking forward to spend a whole lot of- To creating. Studio, yeah. So Absolutely. more than exciting for shows this year, I'm excited for, um, for you know, studio time and yes. developing the- That's important. Work. Yeah, and for me, I, I like to work in seasons. So, you know, last year I did produce some, you know, produce work, but not what I could because of all the yeah. things that I had to do. And, and I was okay with it. And I didn't feel like sad or bad. And it was like, this, this, this <laughs> is for this reason. And I'm going to make sure that I produce the best shows I can. Now, this year is the other way around. It's like, I don't want to have too much distractions. I want to really yeah. spend a lot of time in my studio. So I, I started the year. 2019, I went to my studio, I cleaned up and uh, threw a bunch of- That's awesome. I expanded my space and now I'm, you know- Yeah, ready. that's right. I've seen that. Start, that's exciting. To start working. Yeah. So it's- Yeah. Uh, see, I've been in that like creating mode for a couple of years now and I'm finally ready just to like crawl out of my shell and <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> become right. human again and, you know, <laughs> get out there. That's a Exactly, which I think is is important, right? And sometimes I think yeah. we we as artists we kind of uh, self punish ourselves because yeah. you know we we feel like we see everybody else in social media, and of course you know it seems like everybody's working all the time in their studio and so on. And 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 I know you know for some people maybe, but there are seasons, right? I believe that you know there are yeah. there are seasons in which you have to hustle and you have to prepare and do things or maybe a season in which you have to spend researching and, you know, thinking mm -hmm. about what you do or, you know, what, what does it mean to you? And yeah. And sometimes you just don't have it and you just have exactly. to take that break because it's kind of painful when you can't mm -hmm. create and get your thoughts and emotions out. But, and, you know, I think that downtime is, is kind of needed just to recharge. Right. Exactly. And I believe that when you come back in the studio, then you have a, a fresh eye, new energy, and uh, you're ready to roll. And, yep. and, every, and every artist is different, right? Every artist is different. I, you know, I don't judge other artists for their, how they work their career. It's, you know, if you make it work according to where you are in your career, where you are in your stage in life, and, uh, you know, that's how it works. Like, even yeah. if, I remember when my kids were smaller, you know, it was kind of difficult to work in my house because the kids were coming in and out. Now they're teenagers, so they're yes. coming into my studio space. <laughs> right? They're like and never home now, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. 
<laughs> so uh, <laughs> life changes, right? And, and you adapt yes. and go. And the most important is to, you know, continue, continue uh, creating great work. Yeah, I think the word is adapt, right? Like you have exactly. to adapt to constant changes and mm-hmm. and kind of, you know, grow and go with whatever you're going through. Mm-hmm. Well, Jamie, it's been really awesome to have you here talking about the ever-changing life of an artist. I know your life and my life will continue to change and evolve and I uh, look forward to, you know, catching up with you in person next time. Uh, hopefully as the that weather gets great. better in Chicago. <laughs> Yeah, I will be at the Joe B coming up. Ex- exactly. And give a big hug to Michael as well on our behalf. I will. Um, and uh, it's been uh, my pleasure to know you guys and to follow your career and continue doing that. And um, Well, us yeah. too. Give yeah. a hug to Janina. <laughs> will do. Will do. Uh, and our friends, thank you so much for listening to this podcast. If you enjoyed it, if you enjoyed our conversation, with Jamie and I, please share it with a friend. That's something that you can always do. It will make, make me so, so happy. And also, don't forget to follow Jamie on Instagram. And also, you can follow me at Sergio Gomez Projects as well. And we'll see you at the next level. Check out our website at www.theartistnextlevel.com where you will find our podcast library, learn about our upcoming webinars, find resources relevant to your career, and much more. Thanks for listening to today's podcast, and we'll see you at the next level.